was giggling about the games that I had played with many hearts. And All right. Welcome back to Good Day, D.C. Uh, this is an absolute honor to be sitting here with hip-hop legend, rock and roll hall of fame, best-selling author, <laughs> Grammy winner, LL Cool J, here in studio. Good morning to Pleasure. you. It's Good an morning. honor to have Good you morning, on, man. especially now in the 50th anniversary of hip-hop. We're going to be breaking down all, everything from your career, but also the incredible show you have here this weekend in D.C., an incredible book signing at Mahogany Books as well. But first, for our D.C. audience, right. this is a really interesting concept for a show. You're going to have a continuous show with incredible guests, The Roots, DJ yeah. Jazzy Jeff, yeah. Questlove, obviously, and Queen Latifah and everybody. What can audiences expect, and what do you love about performing in D.C.? Well, first of all, I love coming down. Thanks for having me. I love coming down to D.C. I've been coming down here for a long time, and, you know, D.C. influenced my music in a lot of ways. I mean, even, you know, incorporating Go-Go and the Rock the Bells early on in my career was because we would come down to, you know, D.C. And then, you know, in terms of the show, it's one nonstop party. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you have The Roots who are always on stage, and you have this constant rotation of artists coming in and out, and the party never ends. There's no set changes. There's no lulls in the, in the, in the, in the vibe. It's going to be, you'll see me, you'll see Queen Latifah, you'll see Bone Thugs and Harmony, Jazzy Jeff will do things, Z-Trip will do things. There'll be this combination, Black Thought, Quest Love. Like, you'll feel this vibe, and it's just, I think, a very, very special show. Um, you know, that we're doing at I'm Capital excited. One Arena. You know, it's interesting to talk to you because I'm sure you've talked about your name uh, over the years, but LL Cool J is, a, is, is such an iconic name in hip-hop and music and entertainment in general. <laughs> Do you remember the, the moment you decided on that being your stage name and, and <laughs> whether or not you saw it sticking? Because, like, but before you come out with that name, that name isn't normalized for us yet. Right, and then right. over the years, it becomes that way. Do you remember coming up with it and then hearing it stick? Oh, yeah, well, you know... I, uh, you know, I had a friend, his name was uh, Playboy Mikey D, and all the, all the people in the neighborhood had different names with, like, some sort of romantic thing attached <laughs> to it. So I was like, yo, he was like, yo, you should be like Ladies Love, or, you know, let's do a Ladies Love. And I was like, yeah, I'm Ladies Love, Cool J. So it was really, like, wishful thinking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, um, when, when it was time to make a record, I was the first artist on Def Jam. There was a song called It's Yours that was on Def Jam Productions. I bought that song. I got connected with Rick Rubin through Ad... Adam Harvitz wow. of the Beastie Boys. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was too long for the label, though. Ladies Love Cool J would be too long, so we just made it LL. You know what I mean? LL Cool J, and it just, you know, the rest is history. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's stuck. Yeah, we're, <laughs> yeah, we're sitting here years later after Mama yeah. Said Knock You Out came out, and there's that lyric, don't call it a comeback, I've been here for years. Yeah. What does that line mean to you now as you sit here than when you wrote it? Like, what, what was the narrative in your mind? Because rap is storytelling. I, that's why I love hip-hop, yeah. it's storytelling. You know, I, I, I think, you know, for me, the thing that's fun and, and really exciting is the idea of showing people that you can have a long and storied career and you can take it to another level and you continue, you can continue to be great. I look at artists like Mick Jagger. I look at Paul McCartney. I look at, you know, Bruce Springsteen. I look at people that, you know, continue to elevate their careers, Bono. And, and I just know that, you know, for hip hop, this is a new thing. Yeah. This whole idea of us um, being able to continue and it not just, it, it's not just about, do I have a song on the charts this week? It's mm -hmm. bigger than that. And that, to me, is, is inspiration for the world. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It just shows, you know, current generations and future generations what's possible with an artist's career. You know what I'm saying? In, in today's time, I mean, I think last year was one of the best years for hip-hop I've seen in a long time. You had uh, Ab Soul, Pusha T's record, Nas's albums, Kendrick Lamar dropped incredible yeah. re music that year. But with the Nas thing is interesting to me because he's had these six classic albums right now with Hit Boy that have been Magic and, and, and King's Disease. Right. What are you seeing in, in hip-hop these days? And is it crazy to you to think that a guy 30 years into the game has released six albums in five years? No, it's not crazy at all. Yeah. I think it, it, you know, I think that it, it just, he was inspired and, and wanted to do something creative, and they put together a great body of work. Mm. And, uh, you know, I've been inspired. That's why I went in the studio with Q-Tip, and uh, he executive produced a new album for me. So um, I have this new album that I'll be putting out at the end of this year or early next year. Awesome. And uh, it is a full body of work. And I just, I just think that, you know, what you're finding out is that hip-hop artists are more than just a trend. Mm. You know, it's more than just, you know, one album or one hit song or, you know, we really are, you know, artists that are contributing to a culture, not mm. unlike a Miles Davis, not unlike a, you know, Charlie Parker mm. or, or, or Bird or, you know, Dizzy Gillespie. So it's, 
you know, those things don't surprise me. As a matter of fact, I think it's amazing. And I think, you know, those great albums that he created and the artists and all these other artists pushing these different oh. artists, they're important artists. And they deserve to be recognized, right. you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna bring you over to Joe Claire shortly, but real quick, we have this incredible book yeah. here. It's out right now. Uh, yeah. You were doing a very special event tonight at Mahogany Books, yeah. uh, National Harbor. Talk about this book in general, what reaction you've gotten from fans, because this is covering, obviously, the 50 years of hip hop, but yeah. you're somebody who's so integral to that generational aspect of hip hop. What, what did you wanna get across? Well, the thing about this book that's really, really important is the fact that there are hundreds of essays by various artists in hip hop culture, yeah. everyone from a Nas to a Dr. Dre, from a Snoop to an Eminem, from a from a Fab Five Freddy to a, you know, you name it. There's so many different art to a Q-Tip, and they're all even Mary J. Blige, and they're all talking about what hip hop means to them, how they got in the game, why mm. they love it, how it changed their life, etc. So why is this book important? Because two, three, four hundred years from now, this book will, is the real narrative. Mm. This is really straight from the horse's mouth. There's no ghost writers. They're, yes, they're, Vicky and, and Alec did a great job of helping us put it together, yeah. but this is really about the, these artists in this book talking about their lives and yeah. talking about what they've been through. You know, um, so when you get this book and you see everybody from Grandmaster Cass, the Cold Crush, to the Alchemist, yeah. you know, to Alchemist, wow. talking about how he got into the game, you know, Cool Keith from Ultra Magnetic, you know, awesome. Moni Love, uh, you know, Master Ace, yeah. you know, it's just Funk Master Flex, it's just a salt, I mean, it's just, it's just really an incredible book, Classic. Kumo D. You know oh what I'm saying? Oh my God! That's you know, like, incredible. Like, it's it's just a really important book for hip hop culture, and that's why I called it "The Streets Win" because we really started something on the corner, and you know, what in in 24, it breaking will be at the Olympics. So we've gone all the way from the streets to the suites, and, and, <laughs> and it's real. Yeah. So the streets win. Yeah. Incredible. All right, 50 years of hip hop. We got to bring you over to our buddy Joe Let's Claire. Let's get Joe it. Claire, obviously host of Rap City for no so doubt. many years. Uh, while we're walking over, is there a song of yours that hits different when you play it live than it did when you remember recording? Like when you're out playing these songs live for audiences, yeah. does, does something emotionally hit you different when you see a crowd oh, I mean, back at you? There's so many records. I mean, songs like Nitro, songs like Mr. Goodball, you know, songs that, uh, weren't necessarily the most commercially uh, big songs, but are important songs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, those songs, uh, you know, for me, have been like, they're amazing to play. So I don't, like, that's why even during the tour, I don't just play the commercial hits that people know. We dig into the albums. We go deep into it yeah. so that they can get into the artistry. Well, then I need to know. And you know do, Joe Claire, do, so, do, yeah. Do, do you do candy? Yes. On on live? Yes, I do. I, I need to see Candy live. <laughs> <laughs> Bristol Hotel. Yeah, yeah. I need, I yeah, need I know it. Uh, a big old butt. Yes. I need yes. that. We do Going that. back to Cali. Yes. I need that. I need, um, <laughs> man, it's a bunch of records. I, we can't even talk. Who shot you? Oh. The, uh, the, I, the five, four, three, two, one. Yes, And yes. then all the battle joints that you used to take out all the rappers that you took out yeah. over the years. Yeah, one we had some things, fun. Since I'm here this morning, one of the things that never comes up with your name that's supposed to come up every time they mention LL Cool J mm -hmm. is how many rap beefs and battles you won. <laughs> Nobody talks yeah. about it. It's like, yeah. I'm like, hold up, LL is the champion. Who wants to talk about losing? <laughs> I get it, I get it. Nobody wants to talk Nobody about talk about it, so I guess they don't yeah. bring it up. But Kev, LL yeah. reigned, he all the rap battles he got, and he got in rap battles with icons. Yeah. He won. Yeah. yeah. He, 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 <laughs> he won. And not only one showed off when he did it, too. Like, not only am I doing it, and I'm strong. So and, clear. and everybody know me. LL, the mama, That's the next book. The Mama I Said Knock You Out video was just playing there on the screen a minute yeah. ago. Uh -huh. That's one of the coolest videos I've ever seen. The way Thank it was you. shot, the lighting of that. What, what, are you, what are your memories of that video? So Paris Barkley um, is, uh, was somebody who, you know, helped me put that video together. And, uh, we just like, we were really inspired by Raging Bull, by the hey, Robert De Niro movie. I just saw his Scorsese yeah. movie, movie last yeah, we, night, man. Yeah, we were really, yeah. oh, the, the, Killers flower, of the Flower Moon. Yeah, I want to see that. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to see that. Yeah. yeah, so we were inspired by that. So Robert De Niro kind of inspired me with that particular video and that visual, and that's how it came to be. Awesome. 50 years of hip hop, right now, as we stand here, what can you tell a young person at home who might see this about the, what they need to do to go have the life that they want? I mean, you have to pursue your dreams and you can't be afraid of it. You, you know, you're gonna, 
in life you're going to feel anxiety, you're going to feel fears, you're going to be anxious about things, but you have to believe in that that deep that deeper light within you. Mm. Yeah. And you have to you got to be willing to stretch and go after your dreams. If you're not willing to stretch and go after your dreams and really dig in, it's going to be tough. So I would I would encourage them to go after their dreams and to know as much as you can about your craft, right? Because you know, you can want it all you want, but if you you need science and soul. Mm, you need a combination, mm. right? You need that combination of, of art and science, science and soul, in order to be successful at a high level for a long time. And you right. can't get frustrated when if things go left mm. or if things go right or if, you know, if you slip on a banana peel, just get up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, Keep it moving. You I, know want, what I mean, I gotta get rock those LL Cool J glasses. Well, you know, those, that those too. are. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Really well, appreciate that. I got honor. glasses, Kevin. To the <laughs> I got glasses too, Kevin. Yeah. But those, those look amazing. It was an honor to have you on. Pleasure, Thank you man. so much Pleasure. for being no here. Doubt. No doubt. And, uh, this has been an, an honor. Ah, and, uh, check man. out the concert Capital this One. weekend. Capital One. Arena. Huge, huge lineup. Queen Who's Latifah. Bone Thugs. Is Bone Thugs doing weed song? I mean, I don't see why they will. It's gonna be so fun. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> who's, who's the host for that? I, yeah, I don't know, Joe. Rap Crab City, <laughs> Rap City, really would be nice on that. On that. I mean, these are conversations that can be had, right? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's have some conversations. We'll be let's right back. Uh, we'll be right back, baby. Yeah. So anyway, Capital One. <laughs> <laughs> oh man.